I'm kind of excited about this laptop. I'm not gonna lie. This is the new Razer Blade 15 Studio Edition, and I'm excited because of the GPU power sitting under this hood. This is one of the first laptops to market with the NVIDIA new RTX Quadro 5000 GPU. You've heard of the GeForce RTX 2080 lineup of GPUs, I imagine, and you know they're some of the most powerful GPUs out right now. The thing is, is that while those GPUs can definitely be used for content creation, video editing, photo editing, 3D rendering, other graphical professional work, they're really meant more for gaming. The Quadro lineup, however, is sort of the other way around. You can definitely use it for gaming, but it really wants to help you develop a game more than play one. And it's actually quite complicated, the differences between the two. But real quick for this video, let's just do a complete walkthrough on the Razer Blade 15 Studio Edition like we normally do and go through every feature and spec that we can so you guys are better prepared should you be in the market to go buy one. With that said, let's get started with the styling. Now unlike the other Blade 15 models, this one only comes in one color, Mercury White. It's probably more about silver in my opinion with white keys, but whatever. It's the same color that they've used on other models, usually to indicate it's less gamer and more professional or something like that. Regardless, I like the color. Another thing about styling to push further that idea home on this model is the fact that unlike other Razer Blade 15 models, we don't have a light up three-headed snake logo on the lid. It is instead replaced with the tone on tone variety that we're used to seeing on the new Blade Stealth models. Now you do, however, still get the option of RGB per key keys. And if you wanna stay stealthy about it, white is of course an option. That keyboard, by the way, is still very clicky and it's great to type on like all the others. They did still keep that rogue right function key that I hate and will mention in every video until they remove it. Long story short, it's only on this laptop and no other is unnecessary and it causes you to tap the right arrow instead of the down arrow, the down arrow instead of the right, etc. out of muscle memory. Not the biggest deal in the world, but just it's just annoying. Above that keyboard is our 15 inch 4K OLED touchscreen. You can check out my Razer Blade 15 inch OLED video for more info on the displays. It's the same here, but suffice it to say that it has a much higher brightness, color, and contrast ratio than a normal IPS display and looks pretty solid. And by the way, it also covers 100% of the DCI P3 color space for any designers out there who might care. At the top of the screen, we have our 720p webcam that looks and sounds like this. It is also Windows Hello enabled, so you can use your face to sign into Windows. Now beneath that screen and on the other side of the keyboard are Dolby Atmos capable speakers that sound like this. In this trident resides the power of Atlantis. Under that, we have our thankfully large glass trackpad that is a Microsoft Precision trackpad, so it's much more responsive and it can use Windows gestures as well. For ports, on the left, we have a proprietary power port that allows you to use the insane 230 watt power adapter to charge the 80 watt hour battery. Next to that, we have two USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type A ports and a 3.5 millimeter headphone microphone combo jack. On the right, we have our USB Type-C port that is also Thunderbolt 3 capable, which is good for using super fast media storage. We have another USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A port, an HDMI 2.0B port, and a mini display 1.4 port, as well as a Kensington lock. Oh, and I almost forgot, there's a freaking SD card slot. UHS-3, by the way, hallelujah. No more need for me to carry around my SD adapter to pull footage from my camera. Just pop it in, it locks into place even, and you're good to go. Now the whole laptop weighs 4.88 pounds, so it's not light, but it is only 0.2 pounds heavier than the GTX 2080 OLED model. Inside the laptop, we have an Intel i7-9750H processor with six cores and 12 threads, a base clock of 2.6 gigahertz, and a turbo clock of 4.5 gigahertz. This is paired with 32 gigs of DDR4 2667 megahertz RAM included in the laptop, but since it is user upgradable, it is capable of supporting up to 64 gigs if you were so inclined, and will also support Intel XMP RAM as well. For storage, we have a one terabyte M.2 NVMe PCIe 3.0 SSD installed, but you can also upgrade that yourself to up to two terabytes if needed. Connectivity wise, we have 802.11ax or Wi-Fi 6. Stay tuned for a video I'm doing on that soon, by the way, and subscribe to the channel and ding the bell to be notified when that goes live. And we have Bluetooth 5.0, which brings us to that GPU. We have an NVIDIA Quadro RTX 5000 with 16 gigs of GDDR6 VRAM. To put that into perspective, just on a memory basis, that's twice the amount as the RTX 2080 Max-Q. Now I had to mess around with the most optimal drivers to find the correct ones for that card, since this is one of the first laptops to market with it. But I managed to download the Quadro driver from NVIDIA's site. 
installed it, then signed up for the beta of the new Quadro Experience application, the Quadro equivalent of the GeForce Experience. Now it basically does a similar job to the GeForce variant. It gives you updates to drivers, Quadro content creator specific ones though, instead of game ready ones only. Uh, has an overlay to stream what you're doing with. It's basically just a reworked version of the game overlay from the GeForce experience, no doubt. And instead of scanning a computer for just games, which it can still do, it also scans for various programs that are optimized to be used with those Quadro drivers. Here is a list from NVIDIA of which applications those are. Now I plan to do another video on Quadro versus GeForce and CPU versus GPU and video editing because that's just a controversial thing, et cetera, et cetera. But for this video, we're not gonna get into all that. Let's just do some real world tests on what I usually use this laptop for, which is video editing. Okay, let's do something very controllable in real world for me, which is the same 4K video being rendered out at H.264 YouTube 4K preset on my Razer Blade 15 Studio Edition versus my Razer Blade 15 RTX 2080. and a 10% give or take performance increase. Well, it makes sense actually, considering that a lot of this is using the CUDA cores. And even though the Quadro has twice as much video memory, it only has a slight edge over the RTX 2080 in terms of CUDA cores. Now, also, even though again, this isn't what this is meant for, here's how the Quadro card does against some gaming benchmarks compared to the RTX 2080. And again, not a huge performance jump. Now, the idea here is that you only really see a big performance gap is if either you're doing something that utilizes a massive amount of VRAM, so 3D rendering or something else with large graphic file sizes, or if say Nvidia has a much more optimized Quadro driver than their GeForce counterpart, as is the case with a few more professional apps that Nvidia works with. Lastly, for software, we have Windows 10 installed, and thanks to Razer's no bloat policy, there isn't any pre-installed apps besides the Razer Synapse app, which you can use to control the keyboard colors and other Razer devices that are Chrome enabled as well, adjust fan speeds, create macros, etc. So it's actually kind of useful. Now there is a handful of Microsoft bloatware on here, including things like Candy Crush, but you can easily right click it from the start menu and hit uninstall to remove it. The Razer Blade 15 Studio Edition is available now for purchase and I'll have a link below for more info on it, but buying it will set you back $4,000, which is not a small amount. With that said though, it's actually a little cheaper than I expected. Now, Quadro cards, again, aimed at high-end professionals that have animation studios, large film companies, 3D rendering jobs, etc., are historically a lot more expensive than their GeForce counterparts. And there are a number of reasons for that besides performance, which we can see, at least in my scenario, isn't a giant gap. But that includes things like a dedicated error checking memory, business certifications of a ton of different kinds, etc., that we will not, again, dive into here, but maybe in another video if you guys want me to, let me know in the comments below. Now, real quick though, looking up a Quadro RTX 5000 card by itself, it costs about $2,200. An RTX 2080 by itself, which is what's in the $3,300 Blade 15 OLED that I mentioned earlier and keep referring to, comes in at about 700 by itself. And with this model, you do get a one terabyte SSD and a 512 gig one on the RTX, plus 32 gigs of RAM instead of 16, the additional SD card slot, etc. Considering all of that, it just tells me that Nvidia is discounting the Quadro cards in these studio laptops more than they ever have. Now, I think I can guess why they're trying to get that price point down for laptops aimed at the professional creator market. Even at 4,000 for this laptop, this is still pretty close to what some creators already pay for another laptop company's professional offerings. There you go, complete walkthrough on the Razer Blade 15 Studio Edition. Um, to talk about the GPU a little bit there, like it's crazy powerful, it can do so many things. It's just funny that like the things I do can't utilize a lot of that extra power. And again, there are other benefits to the card, which I won't get into. You guys can look that up if you want or, or ask me and maybe I'll try to do a complete video on that because there's a lot of stuff involved, but that's it. So like for your average person, does this laptop make any sense to buy? Probably not. But if you are doing 3D rendering or you're using all that VRAM or you need those certifications or anything like that, then it, it's kind of interesting to see how competitively priced, at least compared to how they used to be, Nvidia is being with this laptop. Also, if nothing else, SD card slot. There you go, let me know what you guys think in the comments below of this video, of this laptop, all that fun stuff. Always appreciate hearing from you guys. Uh, also, check out the rest of the channel. If you like what you see there, please subscribe and ding the bell next to subscribe so you can notify when I do new videos. As always though, regardless, thanks for watching.